everybody and huge apologies, apologies for the delay just slightly. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for your patience on today's webinar and I'd also like to welcome you. Um, exposing and engaging and taking your expos online is something we're all very excited about and we're incredibly excited to have our guests online today as well. Um, my name is Sarah Gonzalez, for those of you who don't know me, and I will be facilitating today's session. So as I just mentioned, Today is all about uncovering the online expo world and we will definitely try and make up time. Um, now I'm going to quickly introduce our guest Catherine Colville. Um, she is the CEO of World Stage Expo and that's an Australian company that provides expo and trade fair organisers with an interactive online version to complement their live show. Um, so from what we can see, for those of you who registered, we do have some people who are a little bit familiar with online expos. We have some people who have no idea what they are. And then we've also got a bulk of you who would like to find out more and how they can add and what they can add to your online event. So um, without any further ado, I'd like to pass it on to our lovely guest today, Catherine. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. It's nice to be here. Let's get started. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, I'd like to gauge the audience that we have today just on... on how familiar people are with online expos. Uh, usually when I start talking about online expos, people are not very familiar with them. They don't really know much about them. So if I can just get an indication from everybody how much they know about expos. Um, Sarah has a poll here, so you can select multiple choice answers. You can pick as many as you like. Um, so if you wouldn't mind filling that out, that would be great. Great, so we can see you know, many people may have attended an online expo or either organised one. Maybe people are just interested in attending an online expo um, or attending one. And then there's also people who have no idea. And Catherine, in your experience, what's usually the most common response to this when you speak to people? Yes, usually it's, I have no idea, but um, they're interested. Well, there you go. <laughs> The poll represents that, so thank you everybody. We have 61% saying that they have absolutely no idea, but they are also interested. So thank you for your responses. We'll now get on with the show. Thank you. All right. Um, well, I'll start with, since most of you are not familiar with what an online expo is, I'll tell you briefly what one is. Um, essentially, it's a type of hybrid event. Um, hybrid events are those that have both a live audience mm -hmm. as well as an audience that is online um, separate to the live audience. Um, an online expo is a hybrid event that is specific to trade shows, expos, trade fairs, that kind of thing. They're not actually new. Um, they have been running for quite some time in the US. Uh, the USA has been doing them for over 10 years closer to about 12 to 15 now um, and most people over there are very familiar with it. Uh, it's, it is a bigger industry than ours though and it isn't something that has been seen much over here just yet. It's something that will complement or supplement your live trade show or you can actually run one completely separately on its own with no live show attached. We do find though that if there is a live show it is far better to, to complement that live show with an online expo and they can be promoted together. They have pretty much the same features as a live trade show or ex expo. So what you will see in them is a series of exhibitors, stands. You'll have a whole lot of advertising. You can have sponsors highlighted. You can have an online show bag, the same the same or even different to the show bag that visitors receive when they walk through the live event. Uh, you can have a speakers program as well and you can have your exhibitors being able to offer their show specials or um, do product launches um, and depending on what sort of online expo you run you can even have a shopping cart in the, in the corner where people can purchase um, goods or products that are being promoted at the expo. So just in terms of what an online expo may look like, uh, there are usually two models that you can find. In the US, their experience is generally with um, a 3D type of show. Um, it's, a, it's a virtual world. 
these are just some images, some static images of what a 3D expo can look like on your screen. Uh, when you enter it, it's like walking into a virtual world. Um, you're given an avatar. That avatar cruises around wow. <laughs> the expo. Um, you can, as your avatar, walk up to a stand um, and engage with the exhibitor that's there. Um, so it's essentially it can replicate what the live show looks like. Um, these are quite, quite technical. Um, I will go through... I'll look at the, the different models for you and weigh up the pros and cons. Uh, with 3D model, um, the pros are, they are obviously very slick looking, very impressive. Um, they're probably very, very good for gaming and IT industry related expos, mm -hmm. um, just due to the technology and um, the amount of manoeuvring that's needed. It's, it, it can be a bit like a game, mm. um, so like a video game. So they are the pros for the 3D modelling. Um, I guess the cons for those are that they can be quite expensive. Mm -hmm. um, the software and the technology that is behind them can be very expensive. Um, and also, depending on the quality of the technology, I've used some that can be fairly clunky. You spend a lot of time using your mouse and your arrow buttons to maneuver around between stands and trying to enter stands and uh, you possibly could lose some engagement between your visitors and your um, exhibitors in that regard if that's the case. So just to get this um, and perhaps just to put this all into perspective, if I was to attend as an exhibitor at a live conference, yep. um, people would also be able to visit me online. Would I then need someone standing next to me to interact with those people online throughout the actual conference or is it something that happens after and before the conference? Um, you can, depending on what software you have available okay. to you, you could do any or all. So, okay. Um, it's the 2D model, which I can take you through. Okay. Um, if, if you were to do the 3D model, mm. um, the exhibitor can actually turn on buttons to say that they're, they're at their stand mm -hmm. and their stand is being manned and you could chat online with with the exhibitor at that oh, time, okay. um, or they might nominate certain hours that they're available to chat online, or you can book appointments and things like that. So it is possible to be there and to be chatting live, mm -hmm. um, or you, but you may need to have staff mm -hmm. manning that the chat. That chat, yes. yes. So um, th that is very popular in the 3D modeling, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, if we have a look at the 2D modelling, this is where it's more of a flat feature, so it will it will look similar to your website. You can actually have it all branded to match your live show, and usually live shows have a separate website um, promoting the live show. It can usually be accessed via a click-through button from that website. So it would be something like visit, can't get to the show or wish to visit again, visit online here and mm -hmm. you'll do a click through button and you can have it as, I guess, fancy as you like in terms of your branding. Um, you can have instruction pages where you might have a curtain that says welcome to the show and you register your visitors yep. that way. And then somewhere in that platform there will be what we call an interactive floor plan. So this won't just be a static floor plan like a lot of websites have that just simply shows a floor plan and the layout of their stands. Um, this will be an interactive one where you can actually click on a stand, open the stand up and see who's in it. There's various ways you can do that. You can either have one like the one that you can see on your screen now where uh, they have opened up um, a stand that has CH Gourmet Imports mm -hmm. in that stand and you can see the details of, of their contact details. They may have a profile and a category there. Um, it's quite small. It's like a little business card size mm -hmm. information type thing. Or alternatively, you could have a, a version that actually then opens that stand up. So when you click on it, it will be something similar to what you see on your screens now. 
Um, this is a half a page, so usually you would see a full page on that exhibitor. Um, the exhibitor can put their show specials in, they could put brochures in as PDF versions. Mm -hmm. Any brochures that they're going to be handing out at their live show, they can actually upload as PDF versions. Um, you can have buttons such as chat online or book an appointment mm -hmm. and have the option of turning those on. Um, you can, as an organiser, you can choose whether you turn that on for everybody or whether you may actually get them to pay for the privilege of turning that on. Mm. Not, not all exhibitors may want that option, so you can open that up to them. Mm. Um, but essentially, this method actually allows them to brand their stand as their own. So my personal preference as somebody who has exhibited at quite a few shows and paid you know, substantial amounts of money to be there for a couple of days. Um, personally, I think the more you can offer to your exhibitors mm -hmm. in terms of their own branding, of their own stand, um, is better value for them. And on your, with your experience, are you finding that people these days who are running these types of online expos using that as another added value um, with the exhibitors or they're charging more for that? Definitely. Um, it's, it's an added value. I'm actually going to talk a little bit further oh. in that discussion. <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, about how you can add value mm -hmm. um, for your exhibitors and also add value for yourselves as the organisers mm -hmm. as a revenue stream. There are many, many options for that. Um, and also added value for your visitors. Mm. Um, I think online expos are a way of creating a win-win-win situation. You're creating... Um, value for your visitors and more opportunity to visit the show. You're creating value for your exhibitors in terms of more exposure mm. and a greater visitor base and better branding and all the rest of it, um, greater opportunity and you're actually creating a revenue stream for as yourself well. as the, as the organiser. And also for associations, it's an opportunity to do membership drives as well online. Mm. So yeah. there's quite a few um, positives about extending the show out to an online audience mm. and not just uh, limiting it to the to the live show and who the foot traffic that can walk through the door yeah. on those couple of days. So in terms of, just to recap on the 2D model, the pros for those are that they're quick and easy to use. So yeah. you get very quick engagement with, um, I mean, people really come to expos to do business, to mm. network, um, meet potential customers, and for the customers that are visiting, they, you know, they're there to do business too. So mm -hmm. a quick and easy click option where you just you can see who's in a stand. Great, I want to see them. Click on it, open their stand up, and see what they have to offer. Is um, to my way of thinking a little bit more beneficial than manoeuvring your avatar, creating a person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, it, like I said, there is a place for 3D versions as well, particularly yeah. in the tech field. So um, the pros for the 2D is that it's uh, less expensive as well to do it that way. Um, and you really do, I think, get greater exposure for your, for your clients with their full page, um, full page uh, stand options. Um, the cons, you do need to be careful about the software that you choose in terms of the 2D modelling um, and and the platforms that you use, in if it's not a very flexible model, uh, you may find that they can't be opened on iPads, mobile phones, things like that. So mm -hmm. there might be a limit to um, how they can be used. So mm -hmm. it's fine if your visitor is sitting at home on a computer and can open it up, but yes. the mobile versions may not be um, able to be to do that so you just need to be careful in terms of what you're choosing mm. in that regard. Um, so I'll move on to um, the the question that you were asking just before mm. now about you know why would you hold an online expo in conjunction with your live event? And um, I think one one question people ask, or one concern that they have, is that um, you you may lose your audience to your live show, that it might cannibalise mm. the the event um, that you're holding uh, and you don't want that to happen, obviously. Uh, so in terms of um, 
looking at the benefits of doing this and whether it will cannibalise the events, we can look at various statistics here. Um, the US experience has a lot of statistics uh, going back over many years and what they have found is 82% of visitors uh, that visited a, a hybrid event like webcasts and things okay. like that um, would not only visit the online show but it was actually the thing that encouraged them to visit the live show oh. the following year. It was almost like a, a FOMO situation <laughs> where there's a fear of missing out and uh, the online version allowed them to see just how good the show was mm. and they made the decision to visit the live show the following year. Um, we actually have done our own statistics. We've exhibited at shows and surveyed both um, other exhibitors as well as visitors to the show. And what we were finding, we asked the, we asked a couple of questions. Uh, one of them was if if an online version of the show was available for them to visit, would they visit online? And we had 89%. Uh, that graph on the left shows the answer yes, um, that 89% of visitors would actually visit online. And the second graph shows the answers to the question would they attend both the live event as well as the online event if it was available, and 93% said that they would actually visit both. Okay. What we found was that they would use it as both a pre and post visit tool. Uh -huh. So, um, in terms of the pre and post visit tools, we found, um, we did some more statistics on that. 70% would visit prior to coming to the live show. Mm -hmm. They would actually use it to see who was going to be at the show and check their stands out mm -hmm. and see who they'd really like to connect with at that exhibition. Yeah. And in terms of if the show was up for a longer period of time after the live show has finished, because mm. they only go for a couple of days, if there was the option for the show to be up for one week, mm. three weeks, three months, six months, however long you like, and that's the great thing about online expos, you can choose how long you would like to extend the length of your show, 91%. Um, said they would go back in because they never get the time to see everybody that they want to see at an expo. If you've got more than 100 stands and you've got speakers on and things like that at different times of the day and often your visitors only have one day, even if the show's on for two days, they only have one day to visit the show, take time off work or whatever to visit, um, then they need to be able to get to see who they want mm -hmm. to see. And that's, that's what Nicole... Need. Nicole has just said about um, having, you know, going to expos as a visitor and not being able to see everyone. Imagine the opportunity to be able to decide on who you want to see before the show and then once it's over, you know, when you're at the show, a lot of people like to focus on seeing the keynote speakers or looking at the um, workshops that are on and the networking events um, and then they can dedicate the time afterwards perhaps to go in and look at all the people who have anything on offer. That's right, or take advantage of show specials. Mm. Or I, There's so many times I've visited live shows and walked away and I didn't get a brochure and I, I suddenly remembered, you know, a couple of weeks, like, oh, gee, mm. I wish I had have connected with that person. And mm. you can even remember where they, their stand was at yeah. the event, but you didn't get any of their details or you mm. can't remember the name of their company and you wish you could. This way, people can actually go back in and, mm. and reconnect. So in terms of um, of the engagement with your visitors, you're you're actually extending your audience. You can increase your attendee numbers. As I said before, you're not relying on the foot traffic through the door of the live show. You can actually um, open it up. There's so many people that often that there might be several shows on mm -hmm. the same time or they're interstate or they're going away but would really love to, to go to that show but for whatever reason can't. You've also got a whole section of the community that maybe has mobility issues mm -hmm. and this allows you to open that audience to those that either can't attend because they're in a different location, can't attend because they're away somewhere, mm -hmm. can't attend because they can't get time off work or can't attend because of mobility issues. Mm -hmm. This 
allows you to open and extend that audience to all of those people. Yeah, and just on that, because you did briefly mention the cannibalisation of, and I know um, when people talk about webcasting or streaming their keynote sessions, um, that does come up as well. Um, and one of the things is people uh, market in the online version of their event a little bit different. Would you say there's some little tactics and tips and tricks for the marketing of your online expo to make sure that you do still get people turning up to the event? Oh, definitely. Look, most most associations um, would have their own networking uh, databases, mm. um, and you know you can really extend this as far as you like. You can go. Um, regionally, you can go interstate or you could even take it to a global level. If you've got other associations in other countries um, that you want to open it up to their members to visit your show, um, it really depends on the individual organisation and who they're targeting and how far they want to target. Obviously, for something like caravan and camping, you may want to limit it to more mm. the national market because nobody wants to buy a caravan <laughs> in Australia when they're living in, in China. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it just depends really on who your target market is. Mm. But it really does extend your show to up to a global scale. Mm. Yeah. So, um, obviously, increasing the duration of your event also can increase your visitor numbers over time. It allows you to do a longer marketing strategy yep. if you'd like. And you can keep promoting it online. And as, did you miss our show? Well, here it is. Please still visit. Um, so that actually engages um, with your audience better. Mm. And it also allows your exhibitors to engage with their audience um, in, a, in a far greater way with mm. greater exposure. So what you're doing there is actually by engaging great, a greater number of people and for a greater length of time you're adding a lot of value to your exhibitors who mm. pay quite a substantial amount of money to be at what is usually quite a short show. Yeah. And limit to the physical people that can walk through the door. Mm. Um, in terms of um, the added value that you can give to your exhibitors, you're obviously increasing engagement and networking. Um, there's a lot you can do in the online space in terms of networking. Exhibitors can network with each other. They can network with, with their end client, mm. the, the visitors to the show. Um, they can network with people in other countries who have similar products. Um, and what you can also do for them is capture all of their leads mm. for them by registering all the visitors that come through the online space you can literally hand them a database of their clients. For the organiser as well, you can capture your own data for marketing purposes. So you're actually broadening your marketing strategy and your marketing opportunities for future years to grow your show over time. So in future years, you just keep building and building that database and you've got another advertising um, avenue to go down with that. Um, with that, uh, in terms of giving the data to your exhibitors, it's really the organiser's choice whether they choose to give that uh, to them for free or whether they choose to have another revenue stream through that and charge for that data. Mm. Um, as someone who's been an exhibitor at shows, um, I've found it quite irritating that mm -hmm. I've had to then pay extra on top of what I'm already paying to um, get those, those leads mm -hmm. and that data unlocked. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just my personal experience. Mm -hmm. uh, we, it depends really on, on what software you're using, whether you choose to, to charge for that. We personally don't charge our organisers or our exhibitors for that, mm -hmm. for that data. So um, that and again, that's come out of my experience as being an exhibitor. Mm -hmm. And I think you choose not to do that. Yeah, one of the things we find um, at our, when we exhibit as an organisation, is getting the leads that the salespeople are capturing and getting those into a database somewhere so we can cons consistently track them. So 
I'm assuming, like you said, with this, um, you've got the technology online. Absolutely. So when people are coming to your virtual stand, you can capture that data and then possibly have it integrated with your other CRM platforms. Or That's right. Like that as well. Yeah. Okay. And it's not just a matter of um, capturing their details mm. so that you can promote or or maybe follow up a lead on a sale or something like that. Um, it, it's also about knowing your numbers. Uh, how many people visited that particular stand? Mm. How many people walked through the <laughs> virtual door? Yes. Um, how long did they stay? Mm. Um, that kind of data, actually, a lot of that is limited um, when you're experiencing it at a live show. You can count how many people walk through the door, but you can't necessarily tell how long they stayed mm. or who they visited at the show. Yes, the individual exhibitor may have that information if they chose to hire a scanner of some sort mm. or and unlock their data, yes. but for everybody else, you may not be able to tell just how long they stayed, how many times they came in and out, um, this allows you to capture all of that data. That's a good point. So some shows, some live shows do, but they tend to be quite expensive to mm. run. So uh, this way, if um, if associations are looking to find out that information and, the, and they don't get that from their live shows now, then this is an opportunity to do that mm. as well. Um, the other thing you're doing is you're using up-to-date technology and um, one of the things we're finding with this is that the younger generations this definitely appeals to. Mm. So if you're looking to, over time, increase and engage with your younger generation audiences, I mean, if we just followed the same path that we're, that we're all on now, then there's a limit to, to who comes in, I guess. But mm. um, if you're wanting to extend your show to future generations, and keep it going and keep it up to date and um, and exciting, then the younger generations definitely appeal. Mm. Although having said that, um, apparently the um, statistics are that the generations that are most online with mm -hmm. all of these things are actually the sort of 35 to 50 year olds now. Yeah, so... Um, that's Everyone just loves this. <laughs> business world. Um, and I think there's also you know, an expectation these days that yeah. people offer an online um, system of some sort and because that is the up-to-date technology so mm. doing that, that's your added value. Um, in terms of what this means and the benefits that it brings to um, the organisers of the show, then it, it can result in a substantial increased revenue, um, even though these things cost, can cost money up front. Mm. Um, you can usually, if you choose the right software and the right platform, um, it can allow you to actually get your online expo for free without, you know, even though you're paying for it upfront, mm. and actually make a revenue on top of it. So the way that can happen is um, through well, several methods. You can use it to increase membership opportunities. Mm -hmm. So you might have members only areas in your online expo where members of your associations who have membership numbers can enter by providing their membership number in there. Um, and if somebody tries to enter who's not, or you might give them a glimpse of what's mm. in there, maybe some important speakers, um, come and see who's speaking today. Uh, and if anyone's not a member but is interested in hearing them speak, mm. you can actually have a pop-up that says become a member mm. and come and sit, hear this person speak. So you can use it to drive membership um, and increase revenue that way. The other ways you can increase revenue is through all of your normal things that you would do at a live show. So a lot of people charge, a lot of organisers charge for the advertising mm -hmm. um, that exhibitors, if exhibitors want their name up in lights or mm. you know, front seats, uh, that will charge extra. Um, sponsorships, again, as well, uh, is something that you can pay extra for as an exhibitor. Uh, all of that can still happen online. You mm. can have advertisements that are flicking through the screens. You can have permanent logos front and centre on your front pages. Um, you can have an online show bag that people um, pay a bit extra to mm. be in or to advertise their show specials. 
Um, your speaker programs, as I mentioned, it may not just be for members necessarily. If, um, if anyone has a sort of closed room with a speaker program in it, quite often I've been to shows that will charge $15 per speaker mm. and others will charge $15 per half day and you get tickets to go and see three to five speakers in that half day period. Mm. Um, you can do the same thing online. You can actually allow people to choose which speakers they see. And again, for your visitors, if they are at the live show and can only spend one day there but really wanted to see a speaker that was on mm. the second day, this gives them the opportunity to also visit again and come back in and um, you know, they can pay to see mm. another speaker or somebody that really interests them. So this ties into, uh, just quickly, um, just before when we sent out the invitation for this and people registered, there were a few people who couldn't attend but they actually said that they would submit questions. Um, and Jenny actually submitted a question and she was asking because they, as, a, as an organisation, they stream their events through webcasting. Yeah. So is that something that can be tied into this so Absolutely. you can have both the speakers online through a streaming component can, yeah. and then the expo as well so people get the entire experience? Exactly. Okay. Good. Exactly. So it can be become a complete hybrid event mm. in that regard, um, and also you can archive them. So if you if you're choosing to keep the show, mm. the online show up for three months, say after the live show has closed, yep. then you can still have the, those um, speakers recorded and their presentations accessed, and you can choose whether you charge for that or Afterwards. so you can keep getting an, a revenue stream that way as well. Cool. Um, and of course you have the choice of whether you charge your exhibitors an extra fee to be online mm. as well. And as an exhibitor with the on-demand content, if I wanted to, ch if I had a show special for example and then I wanted to to say my online expo was going to be hosted online for three months' time, yep. would I be able to change up that special and change up any sort of promotional marketing material that I wanted to? You could. It depends on the software you use mm -hmm. as to whether uh, that can happen or not. But the, what we, the software that we use mm -hmm. and have designed um, specifically allows for that to happen mm -hmm. where we actually have an exhibitor login. So the exhibitor okay. can actually control what they, what they put in. Yep. Um, again, you may choose to to charge for that privilege mm. or um, allow them to, to do that themselves. I think the important thing for associations um, and not for and the not-for-profit sector is that they have um, some flexibility yep. in the software um, in terms of what they want to offer mm. to their exhibitors. Mm. Um, some organisations do not want to pass on additional costs um, and therefore would rather you know, choose a, a, a basic model and just have everybody doing mm. the same thing um, and have access to certain things and then others would, would prefer it to be um, an opportunity to really increase the success of their show mm. financially and, and from a visitor, visitor point of view and attendee mm. numbers. Um, I'm just looking at some of the questions coming Yeah, through. we um, might go to some of those um, and I'll just read out one. Um, at more from Nicole as a comment um, that online expos allow small organisations that maybe cannot afford to send all their staff, they could encourage them to go online as well so that could save an organisation money which is another benefit to what we're seeing. Yeah. Um, and Emma's just asked, and this is what we just briefly touched on, so do you see many expos that are exclusively online these days? Um, I have seen a few but not many. Yeah. No, most, most of them will be in conjunction with a live a live show. Yes. Um, I also think an important question that came came up uh, is the issue of privacy mm. and um, how the database is used. And I think Carly answered the question, and she's correct in saying it depends on what terms and conditions you place on the at the very front when mm. people um, are registered as a as a visitor. So that can be really in the control of the organiser as mm. to what sort of, um, I guess, terms and conditions uh, they'd, they'd like to use the database for. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
I think that's all the questions that have come through, but if anyone does have any more, um, please let us know. Um, we just want to go into now just quickly before we finish up. You know, we know what the benefits are of online expos. We know how they work. We've seen some examples and we know obviously there's a case for them, but what do you need to run one? What sort of investment can you expect to make? And also for people out there in webinar land, um, you know, what should you be looking for? When you're going out there, you've decided you want to run an online expo as part of your next conference. What should you be asking the providers out there to make sure that you get it right the first time? Because um, it is quite a new experience for yes. many. What sort of questions should you be asking? Okay, so essentially what you would need to run an online expo is you need um, a good online expo software package or mm. platform um, that that suits your needs. So whether yes. it's a 3D version or whether it's a 2D version, you need to make that decision. Mm -hmm. You need to make these decisions fairly early on. Um, you recently held a, um, a webcast mm. with Max and Chris on hybrid events and the same thing applies here. They said don't leave it too late to make mm. the decision. When you're starting very at the very outset planning your show, your event, your live event, that's when you should really start thinking about whether you want to have an online show or not. It's not something that can be done at the very last minute yes. and implemented. Um, what you also need is um, someone very tech savvy, an IT team. Um, I wouldn't recommend you try to do the live show and the online show yourself. <laughs> Um, it can be quite complicated. You need somebody to manage the back end, yes. somebody who understands how to give tech support. Um, if you're going with the 2D models and things like that, you still need people that can code a floor plan. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's important that if you want to be able to open up those floor plans and, and have it so interactive mm -hmm. for visitors who are attending, there's a lot of coding involved in mm -hmm. all of that. Um, you probably need to look at an online marketing strategy. Yep. And having seen that, um, you need to look at you know SEO, search engine type things, the costs involved in promoting it online. How often are you going to do that? Things mm -hmm. like that, and uh, and what's involved. Um, our company does a lot of the advertising as part of the package, okay. so um, you know that's something to look at as well when you're selecting you know other. Does everybody offer that? What sort of soft are you buying the software and running it yourself? Yes. If so, what are the additional costs in terms of of advertising um, and promoting it online? Mm -hmm. I think as well in some cases, if you're going to be recording speakers or doing videos and things like that, you possibly need videographers involved and people who can run that sort of thing. Um, and if you do need that, you need to understand if you're using a provider. To do that for you, then you need to make sure you understand exactly what they offer as part of their, their package prices. In terms of um, the actual platforms or software that you use, I think what is most important for associations is that they it is very flexible. It's a flexible product that mm. they're using in terms of um, them having control over what features they want to turn on, turn off. Um, charge for, not charge for, every association and the expos that they run are going to be very different. Um, one of the tricky things in dealing with the expo industry is that every show is different. Every show has a different number of stands. Mm -hmm. um, everybody is paying different amounts for their stands. Some some stands are only $1,000. Others are, I've seen, eighty dollars to $100,000 mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> stand. Um, for a couple of days. So the, it varies so much in terms of just um, you know how big the show is or how, mu how much it's costing. So I think it's very important for associations to have a very flexible product that allows them to create the show that they want online mm. and how much they charge their exhibitors. Yeah. So if you can look for a a package that is a flat like a flat fee, yeah. um, essentially that, that but that has all the flexibility built into it, mm. um, it's something that we've tried to specialise in. Um, and the other thing I will say is I think you also need to make sure that you can the software or the platform that you're using for your online expo can can connect to your existing 
uh, tech functions. Like if you've already got an app, you probably want to make sure that what you're using can connect mm. and link in with your app or your existing website and that it doesn't become a yet another standalone thing. They yeah. all need to be able to inter integrate together and mm. all be linked together. Um, and they all do different things. Apps are different to online expos. They're limited in what you can offer. But I think it's really important that an app can link into the software mm. and vice versa. If so they're so common now, aren't they? They're very common. Yeah. 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 There's not many expos and trade yeah. fairs that don't have an app. Yeah. But people will, will pay a lot of money for an app. Yeah. And um, you want to make sure that if you've already spent that money, that whatever you use can mm. connect into it and Absolutely. be used in conjunction. So, yeah. Um, I've just launched a quick survey just to get some feedback from everyone. Um, and also there's a question down the bottom um, if you'd like to see an online demo of how an online expo works, how apt is that? Um, <laughs> um, you can just tick yes and then Catherine can get in touch with you and show, share with you some examples. Um, so if people who have done it before in the past, what has worked, what hasn't worked, and also take you around the World Stage Expo platform if it's something you're interested in. Um, now, just a few more questions coming through yeah, before we yeah. finish up, which is excellent. Keep them coming through, guys. So, Andrew, can I put more exhibitors on my online expo if I run out of physical space? And Tony's then just said that doing that could impact existing exhibitors. So what are your thoughts on that and the conflict that could possibly arise? Well, they're, they're both excellent questions and yes. excellent comments. Um, the answer to Andrew's question is absolutely. If you run out of physical space and you want to expand your show, and, and obviously that means creating more revenue, you can charge maybe more. Um, if, if you, sorry, I didn't explain it very well. If you have an online expo mm -hmm. running in conjunction with your live show and your exhibitors are are either not being charged to be in the online show, yep. or maybe they're being charged a little bit extra. Maybe mm -hmm. you know between three and five hundred dollars would be probably um, something. I mean, people pay three hundred and fifty dollars just to have a piece of paper in mm -hmm. the show bag. So charging you know each each exhibitor an extra three hundred to five hundred dollars to be online as well and giving them greater exposure and added value, I don't think they would balk at. Um, so if you're looking to increase revenue that way, you can. Maybe if you then run out of physical space, anyone who wishes to come into the online environment really wants to be part of the show but mm. missed out on getting a stand. Maybe you charge them $5,000 to be mm. in that space. Um, or, you know, it's really up to the individual organisation. Tony Lee has, has a very good point that it could yeah. impact, but it really depends on how the individual organisation or organiser um, chooses to handle that situation. Yeah, and I think that as an exhibitor, um, as we exhibit as well, there'd be so much to take into consideration. You know, exhibitors usually attend regularly on a regular basis and you have these relationships and some of them may even be your partners or sponsors. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, in terms of your marketing strategy, how do you make sure you're not cannibalising those people who attend regularly? So I exactly. think I think you're spot on when you say, you know, having your online marketing strategy and figuring this all out in advance yeah. is incredibly important to get it right from the beginning. Um, also, so there's, there's various, in answer to that question, yeah. there's various ways you can do it. You can yeah. do it. Andrew has a very good point, and, but um, I think if Tony has concerns about it, then it, it would just be a matter of looking at the options mm -hmm. and working out how uh, to not have that happen. And I think yeah. there's plenty of opportunities in the online environment to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a question that I'm actually um, looking forward to hearing the answer to because I love this idea from Chris. So can the attendees at an online expo be integrated into CRM systems? Now, Carly said that the data is exportable, but can they? is there an API that just connects to any certain CRMs, um, as an example, with your platform? Yes, yep. our platform does, but if um, you just need to make sure that the so whatever software or brand of online expo you're using or platform, you need to ask that question each time yeah. of that provider because um, not all of them necessarily can. Yes. So you need to make sure. Um, and you, that you'd want it to be quite seamless, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, and just another comment from Tony. Um, so, you know, she thinks it's very important that if you are going to charge exhibitors to be part of the online, then it's vital that you give them service. 
market the on online portion well, make sure you have that strategy right um, as you spoke about before. Um, and if it's an add-on to the existing package for the exhibitor, then you can see how your visitors take up the online expo. So I think you're right, it totally is about your audience, about the industry that you're in, about what sort of conferences you hold um, and how it could potentially work because there's so many elements of an online expo that you could apply, you know, everything or one or two different portions. Exactly, and as I said, every association is different. All of their trade shows are different. So you need to have a product that works for your organisation yeah. and what you're intending for your exhibitors and your audience. So mm -hmm. um, it's really important that you get a flexible product mm -hmm. in that regard. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Um, all right, just we're pretty much wrapped up here. So um, I'll just hand it back over to Catherine for closing comments. I'd just like to thank everyone for joining, for also providing your feedback um, and for your patience at the beginning. Um, this is very exciting stuff, um, so if you have any questions for Catherine or um, Redback, please let us know and we can either pass them on to her or you can contact her directly. Um, like I said, it's great to be able to share these sorts of new technologies with everyone online, so thank you. Um, we just don't know what happens when the wine show has an online expo. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, we might need to organise that somehow. Um, so, you know, Nicole's also mentioned that she's surveyed people about this idea um, and they're excited as well. So closing comments, last piece of advice and wisdom from the wonderful Catherine. Well, I could actually probably go into a lot more detail. Yeah, I bet. So, uh, gauging from the questions and the comments that are coming yeah. through, I think there's probably a lot more that can be said in detail. So if anyone would like to find out more or discuss anything more in detail, please feel free to give me a call um, if they'd like to see a demo of, of, yep. of uh, the types of, of expos you can do, then um, please contact us because we do have some demonstration models that we can show you. Um, and if you want to see one that's coming up and in full working order, uh, there's the Nepean Disability Expo coming up in September on the 12th and 13th ah. of September. Um, which that'll uh, be a good example. You can go in and have a look at if you'd like. Um, so if you Google Nepean Disability Expo, or if you go to www.disabilityexpo.org.au, mm. um, it's a it's a not for profit one, um, and the NRL is supporting them, which nice. is very exciting. So it's quite a big one. Uh, they have over 110 exhibitors. So it's a substantial sh size show and you'll be able to see what what they want. They've used a fairly basic model, um, but it will give you an indication of um, what it's like. Yeah, well, um, keep an eye out for an email we'll send through in, within 48 hours containing a recording of this presentation so you can share that with your colleagues um, as well as Catherine's details and a link to that online expo so you guys can hop online and check it out for yourselves. And I think with these sorts of things, it makes so much more sense to see it in action in a live environment. So, um, yeah, keep an eye out for the email, guys. Okay, so Rebecca's just actually asked us to forward the contact details. Should yep. I I'll include those in the email as well, yep, so everyone can contact you whenever they like. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.